Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at the topic of calculations for National 5 Chemistry. Go to my website to download the free accompanying worksheet for this video and you can fill it in as you work through it. The topics that we will cover today are gram formula mass, moles equals mass divided by gram formula mass calculations, moles equals concentration times volume calculations, using mass and volume together, using mass and mass together, titrations and percentage mass. The timestamps will be in the description box if there's a particular calculation that you want to focus on. Let's first look at gram formula mass. The gram formula mass of a substance is the sum of the relative atomic masses of all the elements present. You can find the relative atomic masses in your data book. It's the mass in grams of one mole of that substance. For sodium chloride, we take the relative atomic mass of sodium, which is 23, plus the relative atomic mass of chlorine, which is 35.5, and we add these together. This gives a gram formula mass for sodium chloride of 58.5. For carbon dioxide, we take the relative atomic mass of carbon and the relative atomic mass of oxygen multiplied by 2, as we have two oxygen atoms. This means that we have a total of 44 for a gram formula mass for carbon dioxide. For magnesium nitrate, we take the relative atomic mass of magnesium, which is 24.5, the relative atomic mass of nitrogen, which is 14, and we multiply by 2, because we have this 2 on the outside of the brackets here, which multiplies everything in the brackets by 2. We then take the relative atomic mass of oxygen, and we times it by 3, and then by 2, because we have 3 inside the brackets and 2 outside the brackets. We then add these together to get a total gram formula mass for magnesium nitrate of 148.5. Pause the video now and try these three examples. We can use gram formula mass in a calculation to work out moles. One mole of a substance contains a specific number of particles. We use this as it's more useful than mass when comparing quantities of different substances which are reacting. We have three different calculations we can look at. Moles can equal mass divided by gram formula mass. Mass can equal moles times gram formula mass. And gram formula mass equals mass divided by moles. We can represent this using a triangle if you find it easier. In the triangle, we will have mass represented by an M on the top. This is measured in grams. We'll then have moles represented by an N. This is measured in MOL for moles. And then gram formula mass, which is grams per mole. To use this triangle, the horizontal line here means divide. The vertical line means multiply. You'd simply cover up the one that you want and then look at what is left. If we cover up the moles, then we have mass divided by gram formula mass. If you cover up the mass, you have moles times gram formula mass. If you cover up gram formula mass, you have mass divided by moles. Here we're going to have a look at using these calculations. We're trying to calculate the number of moles which is present in 10 grams of lithium oxide. So we're trying to calculate number of moles. We've been given the mass, and because we have the formula, we can work out the gram formula mass. That is where we'll start. If we take the lithium oxide formula, we have two lithium, each with a relative atomic mass of seven. We then have one oxygen with a relative atomic mass of 16. So overall, we have a gram formula mass of 30. We can then take the appropriate equation, which we have here as moles equals mass 
divided by gram formula mass. In the question, we have 10 grams and then a gram formula mass of 30. This gives 0 0.33 moles. In this question, we're trying to calculate the mass of 0 0.5 moles of magnesium chloride. So here we've been given the number of moles and because we have the formula for magnesium chloride, we can find the gram formula mass. If we take the formula for magnesium chloride, we have MgCl2. Mg has a relative atomic mass of 24.5. For chlorine, it has a relative atomic mass of 35.5 and we have two. This means overall the gram formula mass is 95.5. We're trying to work out mass, so we take the moles and multiply by the gram formula mass. In this question, we have 0 0.5 moles of substance with a gram formula mass of 95.5. This means that the mass of magnesium chloride that we have present is 47.75 grams. Pause the video now and try these examples. We can also carry out calculations for concentration using moles. Concentration is measured in moles per litre. Volume must always be in litres to carry out these calculations. So to convert from millilitres to litres, always divide by 1000. We can use another triangle to help us if we need to. Here we can see that the, cal the calculation is moles equals concentration multiplied by volume. We can rearrange this by dividing each side by volume to give concentration equals moles divided by volume, or if we divide by concentration, we have volume equals moles divided by concentration. This means that we'll have moles represented by N on the top line. We'll have concentration, which is in moles per litre on the bottom, and volume, which is in litres on the bottom. Remember the horizontal line means divide and the vertical line means multiply. In this calculation, we're trying to find the number of moles of solute that we have in 50 mils of a one mole per litre solution. We're trying to calculate the moles. We've been given the volume and we've been given the concentration. The volume has been given in millilitres, so we first need to change this into litres. To do this, we divide by 1000. 
This means that we have 0 0.05 litres of solution. We can then take moles equals concentration times volume, where we have a concentration of 1 and a volume of 0 0.05. This means that we would need 0 0.05 moles of solute to make this solution. Here we're trying to calculate the concentration. We've been given the volume as 100 millilitres and we know that it contains 0 0.5 moles of solute. Again, we need to make sure that our volume is in litres. So we take the 100 millilitres and divide by 1000 to get 0 0.1 litres. Concentration is then equal to moles divided by volume. In this case, the moles is 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.1, giving a concentration of 5 moles per litre. In the final example, we're trying to calculate the volume of solution. We have a concentration of 0 0.5 moles per litre and we're using 0 0.025 moles of solute. Here we have the equation volume equals moles divided by concentration. The moles in the question is 0 0.025 divided by the concentration of 0 0.5. This gives a volume of 0 0.05 litres. If you wish to put this into millilitres, we would then multiply by 1000 to get 50 millilitres. Pause the video now and try these examples. Using these two equations together, we can calculate what mass of solute would be required to make certain solutions. In this first example, we are trying to calculate the mass of sodium fluoride, which is required to make 500 ml of a 0.5 mole per litre solution. So we have concentration and we have volume from the left hand side. We know we want to calculate mass, we have the formula so we can work out gram formula mass. But what we can see here is that in this triangle we only have one tick and in this one we have two. So we're going to start with the triangle that we know two bits of information about and we're going to calculate the third which is the moles. So we take moles equals concentration times volume. The volume is 500 ml, so we'll divide that by 1000 first to get that into litres, which is 0 0.5. So now we have moles equals 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, so we have 0 0.25 moles. That now means we have a second tick in our second triangle because this number of moles is the same as this number of moles here. We can calculate the gram formula mass of sodium fluoride, which is 23 plus 19 to give 42. And now we can calculate the mass. Mass equals moles times gram formula mass. We have the number of moles that we calculated initially multiplied by the gram formula mass of the solute 
to give a mass of 10.5 grams. We can also use this to work out the volume of solution that would be required if we have a certain mass of solute to use. So here we're trying to calculate the volume. We know the concentration is 0.2 moles per litre and we have 10 grams of the solute to use. The solute is magnesium nitrate. This time we're going to start with this piece of information. We have the mass and gram formula mass so we're able to calculate moles. To be able to do that we need to calculate the gram formula mass of magnesium nitrate using the formula. So here we have 24.5 plus 14 times 2 because of the brackets and 16 times 3 times 2 because so we have 3 inside the brackets and 2 outside the brackets. Overall this gives a gram formula mass of 148.5. We can now calculate the number of moles using the mass from the question divided by the gram formula mass. This is then 10 divided by 148.5 to give a number of moles of 0 0.07. We now know the number of moles that are here, which we can transfer to the other equation. To calculate volume, we take number of moles divided by concentration. The number of moles we've just calculated is 0 0.07. We divide by the concentration that we're aiming for in the question, which is 0 0.2. And this gives a volume of 0 0.35 litres. We can times by 1000 to get into millilitres, which would be 350 millilitres. Pause the video now and try these questions. In question one, we're calculating the mass of sodium chloride. You're given the formula for sodium chloride, which means we can work out the gram formula mass. We're trying to make 100 mils of a 0.2 mole per litre solution. This means that we have two pieces of information that would allow you to calculate moles.
When presented with a balanced equation, we can use the mass equals moles times gram formula mass equation to predict the mass of product which will be produced from a certain mass of reactant or to calculate the mass of reactant required to produce a certain mass of product. We do this in a similar way to the previous calculations. We need to find one chemical which we have two pieces of information for, use that to calculate moles and then use the moles to find the third piece of information which is missing. In this example, we're to calculate the mass of carbon dioxide, which is produced when we have 3.2 grams of methanol burning completely in oxygen. This means that we can focus fully on the methanol and the carbon dioxide. We're trying to calculate the mass of carbon dioxide. We have the formula for carbon dioxide, so you would be able to find the gram formula mass. However, you don't know the number of moles. For the methanol, we have the mass and we can find the gram formula mass. So this is where we will start as we can have two pieces of information about methanol. Using the formula from the equation, we can find the gram formula mass for methanol. As we now have the mass of methanol and the gram formula mass, we are able to find the moles. We do this by taking mass divided by gram formula mass. The mass in the question is 3.2 grams and the gram formula mass is 32. This gives us a number of moles of 0 0.1. We can see now that we have this number of moles. We cannot straight away bring this over to the other triangle. We need to have a look at the mole ratio first. If we look at the mole ratio in the balanced equation, if we had one full mole of methanol, then we would produce one mole of carbon dioxide. This means that we have a one to one ratio. We are only using 0 0.1 moles of methanol, which means that we can only produce 0 0.1 moles of carbon dioxide. We now have two pieces of information about carbon dioxide. Using the formula for carbon dioxide, you can find the gram formula mass which is 44, and this will allow us to calculate the mass of carbon dioxide produced using mass equals moles times gram formula mass. The number of moles is 0 0.1 and your gram formula mass is 44, so we must be producing 4.4 grams of carbon dioxide. Pause the video now and try these examples.
where the previous calculations focused on calculating the mass of reactants or products either required or produced. Titrations do something similar for solutions which are reacting. Titrations are usually used to find the concentration of a solution by reaction with a solution of accurately known concentration, known as a standard solution. The end point is always indicated by use of an indicator which will change colour. In this first example, we're trying to find the concentration of sodium hydroxide. We're reacting 25 ml of the sodium hydroxide and it is neutralised by 19.5 ml of 0.1 molar HCl. We have two pieces of information about the HCl. So this means we can calculate the moles of HCl that was used. Remember, the first step is always to convert the volume into litres. So we're going to divide by a thousand. We can then take moles equals concentration times volume. The concentration in the question is 0 0.1 multiplied by the volume of sodium hydroxide 0.0195. We can then use the balanced equation as we did in the calculations before to find out how many moles of sodium hydroxide would be used. If we have one mole of HCl then we'd require one mole of sodium hydroxide. However, we don't have a full mole. We have 0 0.00195. This means we need the same number of moles of sodium hydroxide. We now have the number of moles of sodium hydroxide. We can use this along with the volume to find the concentration. We must first convert the volume into litres by dividing by 1000. We can then take moles divided by volume. This gives a concentration of 0 0.078 moles per litre. Sometimes titration calculations are laid out slightly differently, where you have a diagram of the titration giving you some information and then a table which relates to the volumes from the burette. So here we're trying to calculate the concentration of sodium hydroxide and we have in the picture the volume of the sodium hydroxide as 20 mils. You can see that we also have the concentration of the sulfuric acid which is being reacted with it and then we have a table which will allow us to calculate the volume of the sulfuric acid which is used. Now to use the table, we're looking for what we call concordant titers. So these need to be two volumes that are within 0.2 of each other. So you can see that we have these two volumes here, which are 20.8, so they're the same. So we can use these for our average titer. So we would take 20.8, plus 20.8 and divide by 2 to get an average and then divide that by 1000 so that that is in litres. So now we can calculate the number of moles of sulfuric acid by taking concentration times volume. So the concentration in the question is 1 and we've just calculated the volume as 0 0.0208. This gives a number of moles of 0 0.0208, and that's your moles of sulfuric acid. If we have one mole of sulfuric acid from the balanced equation, we can see that that requires two moles of sodium hydroxide for full reaction. So we'd need to multiply by two. We have 0 0.0208 moles of sulfuric acid. So we're going to times that by two to find how many moles of sodium hydroxide would be required for reaction in this case, which is 0 .4, 0 0.0416. Now we have the volume of sodium hydroxide as 20 ml, so we need to divide by 1000 to get 0 0.02.
and now we can calculate the concentration. So concentration is moles divided by volume. So we can take the moles that we've just calculated as 0 0.0416 divided by the volume of sodium hydroxide 0 0.02 to give a concentration of 2.08 moles per litre. Pause the video now and try these two examples. Our final calculation is percentage mass calculations. These are used to find the percentage of elements present in compounds, usually in ores or fertilisers for National 5 chemistry. We use the equation percentage mass equals the mass of the element divided by the gram formula mass, all times by 100. Here we're trying to calculate the percentage mass of magnesium in magnesium oxide. The first step is to find the gram formula mass of magnesium oxide. The percentage mass is then the mass of magnesium, which is 24.5, divided by the full gram formula mass, 40.5, all times by 100. This gives a percentage of 60.5% magnesium within magnesium oxide. Let's try a second example. Here we're trying to find the percentage mass of sodium in sodium oxide. The first step is to find the gram formula mass. The percentage mass is then the mass of sodium. In this case, we have two sodium, so that's 46, and the full gram formula mass is 62. We then times by 100. This gives a percentage of sodium as 74.2%. It's important that you take into account that there are two sodiums present within the sodium oxide formula. Pause the video now and try these examples.
thank you for watching my video. I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem and Instagram Miss Adams Chemistry for flashcards and updates throughout the year. Bye for now. Thank you.